Hello everybody, I'm the Baringo and welcome back to How To RA2 where we do some Robot Arena 2 tutorials. Today's topic is front hinge flippers and I'm so excited to do this one because you can't really do front hinge flippers that well. Let me show you what I mean. So here I got a Robot Wars team full of different builds of front hinge flippers. Let's first go to the Firestorm that I originally built without component freedom many, many, many months ago. So you'll first notice, of course, that because there's no component freedom, that the motor is perfectly inside the body and so is everything else. It has a ram plate as the solid part of the flipper. And then there's two extenders here that at the time I put them on to make sure the ram plate was going with this wedge side of the chassis. It's pretty lined, it's lined up pretty well. Ignore CC cleaner in the corner there. Um, but what you'll notice is how high up this ram plate is. Look at this gap from the bottom of the wedge to the bottom of the ram plate. That's a lot. And a normal front hinge flipper in real life Firestorm, he doesn't have that. His front hinge flipper literally goes to the end of the wedge there. When it fires, it's got a good angle that it goes at. But again, look at all of that dead space in the front there. That's pretty bad. Let's go to some other builds. Alright, so you guys get to see an early sneak peek of the Firestorm that's going to be appearing in Robot Wars Reborn Cup Series 2, unless I make some changes, because I think I have to. So, this one was built with component freedom, and you'll immediately notice little wedges in the front, and the motor is slightly sticking out here. When we go into the component section there, you'll see when I flip it this way, that the pivot point of the weapon is pretty much right on that wedge, on that side. And the range of motion is better, but there's still that dead space here in the front. Now let's go to another build real quick where the same thing has been done. And one more little sneak peek, this is push to exit. You'll see him in Robot Wars Reborn episode either 39 or 40, I can't remember. Once again, you can see that the motors are sticking out. There's that little uh, triangular bit that's sticking out of both of the motors. Uh, the pivot point, as you can see, is pretty close to the uh, top of the wedge here. And now let me show you why this is an issue that I didn't think would be an issue. So as you know with component freedom, when it comes to the other motors, if you do the angled motor or the ZTEX, when they're partially sticking outside of a chassis, they will disappear. So you can see, push to exit, you can't see those corners of the snapper burst motors sticking out, right? So the reason I built the upgraded Firestorm and push to exit the way I did was because the mindset was, well, if the motor is sticking out that little bit, it's not going to be a problem. It hasn't been a problem with any other time I've had a motor sticking out of the chassis. It should help me get the pivot point of the flipper closer to the edge so that that little dead space in the front isn't too bad. Well, here's what happens when a flat surface go tries to go up the wedge. This is push to exit, exit, excuse me, and as you can see, the crate is clearly hitting something because I cannot continue to get under it and go all the way to the wall. It is hitting the corner of the motor that you don't see but is in fact sticking out. I am here. Clearly hitting forward, clearly nothing is happening. I delayed recording this for a long time because I was trying to figure out how to make this video. Here is a crappy little uh, bot I threw together which has every type of burst motor with a little extender on the top just to show you how far back you then have to make a bot without component freedom to avoid what you just saw. So first up we have this blue snapper burst motor. As you can see I put an angle connector on the front here to try and get it closer. Just look at all of this dead space. That is a huge amount. In the middle we have the green and purple snapper burst motor, which is the best. It's got the smallest distance from its, from its pivot point to the edge of the chassis there, and its range of motion, it's not bad, but still a lot of dead space. Let me bring this one forward too to show you just how bad it is, significantly worse. And then over on this side, we have the DDT burst motor, which is absolutely horrible. It's far back, its pivot point is so central here that when you try and set it up, look at this. It is god awful. It is horrible. So I was trying to figure out, okay, well clearly it is very, very difficult to make a proper front hinge flipper, so I need to try and make something that's that shows a general idea of what you need to do to make an okay front hinge flipper. So I made this crappy little bot that I didn't even name, and what I've done here is without component freedom, I put in the snapper burst motor, then put on two extenders, put on a ram plate, now, you can see, the range of motion is still pretty bad. See where my cursor is? That is where the front of the chassis is, hidden 
about halfway inside that emergency flipper. I used component freedom to put on this emergency flipper because what I was trying to do is put a piece that was at the front that wasn't a chassis, so some sort of wedge that could help a bot get from the ground to the flipper to make up that distance. Because if you can't get under a bot and get him all the way up your wedge to get to the flipper, it's gonna be useless. There's literally nothing your bot's gonna be able to do. Then I remembered, wait, we have a decent bot that competed in Robot Wars Cup, Mute. Not my version, but Doodle's version. Doodle? Why did I call him Doodle? It's a Seaborg now, I'm sorry. Here is my version of Mute, which again, you can see that the motor is completely in. The, I think this bot was built before component freedom was a thing. Um, range of motion, it's not horrible, but it's not good. It could be better. One thing I figured out when I was trying to put all these pieces together, that I, all these bots that I'm showing you, is that sometimes a steeper wedge is actually a little bit better. Like I said, if you can then just get a uh, emergency flipper or the small wedge uh, at the front of your bot to help a bot get to your weapon, then the steep wedge might not be an issue. So my mute, it's not bad. Could be a little better with a little wedge in the front. Now let's go show you doodles, because he used a component freedom trick in his. As you can see, it's a fairly steep wedge. He used DDT burst motors in his, but here's where the trick is. See where my cursor's going right here? That is where the, uh, the connection point on the DDT burst motor is going. Here is an angle connector. It looks like it's a 67 that then goes to the top of the bot. Then, using component freedom, he put a 45 on and this little piece of black extender. It doesn't look like it's doing much because it barely changes the angle, right? But when you see the range of motion in slow motion, you can see it does a pretty decent job of covering some of that dead space. It gets that extra little bit. You see that? From right about here to right about here. It helps cover it a little bit more. Then the only problem with his uh, mute build here is that there is no uh, any there's no wedges in the front to help get under a bot. And as we saw with mute in Robot Wars Reborn Cup Series 1, I believe it was he and Apollo that had the most difficult time getting underneath each other because it was pretty much chassis on chassis. And when you get chassis on chassis, it's hard. Even if it's wedge on wedge. Um, the emergency flippers are usually pretty good about exposing little ground clearance. So maybe that would be a good way to improve his build is if somehow an emergency flipper was just barely sticking out in the front there. So in terms of giving you guys advice of how to build front hinge flippers, pfft, I can't really build good enough front hinge flippers. I mean, the best thing I've shown you in this video is not even my creation here, this mute from Dom the Seaborg. And even then, with his expertise, you can see that there's still issues with building a front hinge flipper. So my best advice, don't do it. Fuck it. You don't need to build a front hinge flipper. Just build a good launcher and you'll be fine. I'm not gonna lie guys, I can't really think of anything else to say to help you guys with building a front hinge flipper besides just, again, showing more of Dom's uh, recreation here. They're tough. They're really tough. And if there is a better way to build a front hinge flipper, I haven't researched it yet. I did put some time in before recording this video to try and get everything worked out in my head and trying to work it out in bot recreations. As you saw, I built a bot that had each flipper uh, motor and I built an actual bot with what I thought was an okay idea. Um, but they're just, they're very, very tough. So I apologize that this video wasn't really that helpful. I don't think it was that helpful at all, but hopefully it was. The next uh, episode will probably have a better topic to work with, uh, something I can actually figure out without doing a bunch of research before or without saying, I don't know. Thank you guys though for watching. If you like this series, then make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new here because these will be probably popping up every two weeks or so, once every two weeks. It's a fun little series and we got plenty more on this channel that you may be interested in, BattleBots and Robot Wars related. Thank you for watching. See you next time.